We're at uh, Namaskara again for breakfast. This place is just a hidden gem. I'm gonna try the omelet this morning and then we have a private, uh, a private car rental coming and taking us to a couple of temples, the water temple, another one I don't even remember the name, and then a, a waterfall. So we're gonna be gone for the day doing that. It's supposed to rain, but it's uh, stopped for the moment, so let's hope it holds up. We have an umbrella just in case, and uh, hopefully we can stay dry. Cheers. So guys, uh, the private car for the day, we're spending about 850,000 rupiah on, which is probably close to $75 Canadian. And the reason being um, we're choosing that option is to do these uh, tours, you pay per person, maybe 250, 350,000, and you go in a group and you have to go at a very specific time. Um, but taking the private car, you can kind of choose when you want to go. And uh, we went for the private car versus calling a grab taxi because the grab taxi is actually quite a bit more. The one temple we want to go to alone is uh, about an hour and 45 minutes away and it costs about 850,000 just for a grab tax just to go one way. So we're, we're paying 850, we're going to three different locations, we have them for about seven, eight hours basically all day and uh, much, uh, much cheaper. So. Um, we found these guys just by asking around at the tour booths and, uh, you know, seeing who had the best offer and that was it. So make sure to shop around for that sort of thing. If you guys are wanting to do like a little bit more exploring and you're not renting a bike by yourself. Look at these guys, they're going at it. <gasps> uh oh. <laughs> making babies, making babies. <laughs> Sexy time. <laughs> so, guys, it took uh, just over two hours to get here, mostly because we left a little bit late in the day and traffic was uh, heavy. Uh, but we just arrived at Turtaganga. Uh, it's a water palace that was built in 1946 for a royal family by King. Karingasim, I believe his name is. I'm probably butchering that name. And uh, it was actually su supposedly mostly destroyed about 17 years later when uh, um, the big volcano here in Bali um, erupted, Mount, Mount Agung. Um, but I guess they must have rebuilt it because it looks just amazing. So we're just gonna explore this for a little bit before heading to the next destination. Supposedly the pools here um, have enough water to irrigate like all the surrounding rice fields and everything. <laughs>
Beli nyerah kedan bu. Pasrahan. Nanam kau bu. Okay, bagi aku bu. Yang suka bu. At Lempu Yang, you have to pay for a shuttle bus that takes you from the parking area to the temple. The cost for the shuttle is 45,000 rupiah per person, and once you get to the top, you pay another 55,000 entrance fee for the temple itself. They're open air shuttles, and the roads are steep and winding. So once you're at the top again, like I mentioned, 55,000 rupiah for the ticket. Uh, this place is open from 6 to 6, and then they'll give you a sarong. You have to wear a sarong into the temple to cover your legs. So actually a nice surprise is uh, the 55,000 rupiah entrance fee includes your photo. So you get a number right when you buy your ticket and uh, you just wait in line. So I think right now the wait is an hour and a half. I probably wouldn't have paid separately for a photo, but because it's included in the price, why not, right? After you buy your ticket and get your sarong, there is uh, people offering moped rides to the top. Uh, I'd imagine it's for another payment, but we decided just to walk. I don't think it's very far. They have little shops and stuff on the side of the road, so get to check it out, enjoy the view. And when you enter at the, uh, the actual temple area, they spray you with a little bit of water. I assume some kind of holy water type of thing. Right now I'm at the, uh, the top of the temple here. And the view is just amazing. So the way it works is you just give your cell phone, I guess, and they snap photos for you with your own phone, so. So that's done. Took about an hour and 45 minutes, probably. Not very big lineups. I recommend coming in the rainy season if you want to do that photo. Although we couldn't see the uh, volcano in the background. It's covered by clouds right now, unfortunately. Nonetheless, still some, some cool photos. We're just going down now. I think there's a couple more spots to maybe get a few interesting shots and then uh, heading to a waterfall. This is the view from the other side of the gates, the bottom of it. That's our second tourist trap for the day. We're on the way down the mountain now. Where are we going next? Uh, to the waterfall. Yeah, what's it called? We have no idea where we're going. I know. No idea. <laughs> So, a bunch of rice fields and about two hours of windy roads and we have arrived at the trailhead for the waterfall, I'll say. I think it's only about a five minute walk, so again, shops everywhere, some very cool sculpture here for some pictures of a gorilla. All right, let's see what this waterfall is all about. Just like most places, there are uh, shops and restaurants everywhere and they have little uh, things set up so you can get, you know, your Instagram shot into the forest sitting in a basket or a swing or whatever. <laughs> the, uh, the trail down seems to be all steps so far, quite steep, but uh, not so bad. I think we're already nearing the end. Uh, there's another like really steep section of stairs here and then it's 
getting dark, so I'm not sure how good the camera's gonna do once I get down there, but we'll see. It's starting to rain a little bit as well. So there's a sign here behind me that says, go left to the waterfalls and right to something else. Um, but on the left is just uh, this little river, as you can see, this guy's coming back in. So um, I don't know if it's flowing a bit heavier than normal because of the recent rain and such, but uh, we're gonna get our feet wet. This waterfall wasn't for me, guys. But it's such a small space um, that it's almost impossible to get a picture without somebody else in. And I know I'm a tourist as well, uh, but I generally try and pay attention to my surroundings. If I'm getting into a spot to get a photo, I'll take the photo, maybe a couple photos, and I'll get out of there for the next person. But you know there's always people that are just like standing in there for like 20 minutes while everybody's waiting to kind of get their shot. And uh, I don't know if they just don't know or they don't care. Uh, anyways, pet peeve of mine. They have uh, outdoor lights all the way, like leading down to the trail, almost all the way to the waterfall. There's one right here behind me. Um, just kind of spoils the nature of things. So anyways, that's it for the day. It's already after five, it's getting dark. We are heading back up to the car and uh, back into Ubud and probably gonna find some dinner. Sorry guys, the battery in the camera um, died on the way back. We're back in Ubud. Uh, we stopped at uh, this place called Bali Buddha for dinner, it was really good. Had some sort of falafel wraps and salad. And uh, I got a sunburn. Anyways, tomorrow we're doing another all day tour. So uh, it's bedtime. Gonna go shower, go to sleep, charge the cameras. See you in the morning. So guys, the first stop today is uh, Tier Temple. This is the water palace uh, where many people bathe in uh, special water to purify themselves. It's uh, 50,000 rupiah per person entry fee we just paid. Uh, we're gonna head in. I'm not gonna do the actual bathing. Kate will. I'm gonna try and get some video footage. I just want to reiterate uh, that uh, this tour guide is just spectacular. If you're in Ubud, this is the guy you want to take. Um, and not only his company, but I would specifically ask for him. He's just extremely thorough, very kind, and uh, we were just really fortunate to meet him um, on another island by chance and, uh, and start talking with him. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna head in and uh, see what's happening in here. So as with all temples, uh, you must put a sarong on before entering. Um, here they have some that you must keep dry and if you're gonna do the swimming, I think you either need to bring your own or they have another color that's allowed to get wet. Okay, let's let be here for a while or maybe let's uh, uh, up there. Afterwards, I'm going to try Surata is a very charismatic man. He's talking with everybody. So Sudarata has made some offerings for us and brought them with us um, so that we can really experience the traditional uh, way of this uh, process, I'll say. Um, so before entering uh, the temple, you give the offering, you light the incense, you pray, um, and then you go inside. So. Uh, Kate's just gonna get changed and we'll we'll head in. 
After the main entrance, there's an area to the right side where you can rent uh, lockers and uh, different sarong that's allowed to get wet if you're going to go into the water uh, to purify yourself. So after praying, you put the offering on the, yeah, the altar. The altar. So that's the first step of praying. Uh, after that, you go into the area with the water. There are uh, multiple fountains. You don't use the first fountain because this is uh, to do with uh, cremation, I believe. Uh, but you line up and you work your way down each fountain to purify yourselves, yourself in each one. It's very busy in here. This is the second area to pray before entering the water. Yeah. On the altar. Yeah, on the altar. And say thank you. Hopefully we'll make it. So there's about 20 fountains all together. So it could take a little bit of time to make it through all of them. We'll see if she does. I'm sure she'll want to. We're not here often, right? So uh, it's not a quick trip. So might as well wait and uh, experience the full the full effect. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not doing it because I'm choosing to take uh, the video footage. Uh, but maybe next time. You can see many people with uh, jugs of water. Um, they're filling them up, and I'm, I'm told this is maybe because perhaps their family couldn't come. Uh, so they come, they fill a little bit of water from each fountain, and they bring it back to share with their family. Surarata said once every six months. Six months in the in the lunar calendar will be every 210 days. Yeah. This will be a part of the uh, procession of the uh, purification ceremony in one village. Okay. In this temple. Okay. And today we are really lucky because Kate was there in the water for the uh, purification. <laughs> and next have a chance to take a picture of the procession. Very nice. There's no possible way I can explain everything to you that I'm being told right now by our guide. So I 100% recommend that you, you find a proficient guide if you want to truly understand why things are happening, when they're happening, and how to participate in them. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but the the water is actually bubbling up from under the ground. So Suda yeah. Suda is yeah. saying that this is the main entrance point for the for the uh, the fountains here. We're heading now to the third level of this temple, the last level. We're not allowed to go fully inside. So we've been here quite a while now. We're going to take off to our next destination. I'm not even sure what it is, so uh, hang tight and we'll get there. Um, we're just checking out. They have one more fish pond here with a lot of fish, so quite interesting. Of course, where there is a tourist attraction, there are tourist shops. So on the way out uh, in the exit, you are funneled through this area full of uh, merchandise and uh, people asking to sell you different items. So we're just arriving at the gate of Mount Batur yes. and the entry fee is 50,000 rupiah per person. Welcome to Mount Batur guys. This is our second stop for the day. It's a, uh, from what I'm told, a semi-active volcano. So not really active, but every once in a while you can see some smoke coming from the uh, smallest crater. Um, there's three craters here and then there's a large lake uh, below. So let's have a look here. We're just at the top viewpoint and you can actually see, so behind me in the distance, uh, this is Mount Batur. 
and you can see like the lava fields spreading out uh, down below and then the lake is off to the other side here. We're just walking down a little bit lower to try to get uh, some better pictures maybe without some buildings. We've been pretty fortunate today uh, to have good weather again actually. I, I shouldn't say today, we've been fortunate for most of our trip considering it's rainy season. I think we only got rained out really two days. So yeah, this is a much better view from here. So we just came down the mountain a little bit from our view, viewpoint of uh, Mount Batur. Um, we still have the lake behind us, but we came to a less crowded area just to uh, have some fruits, a little bit of a break, uh, relax a little bit. And then we're on to the next destination, which is the Mother Temple Besaki. Uh, it's the biggest, I don't know if it's the biggest, but it's the main temple for all of Bali. So um, I feel like if you come to Bali and you're visiting temples, you should go to that one, right? So headed there next, but we're going to relax just a few minutes here, enjoy the view and uh, have a snack. Welcome to Pura Besaki, the Besaki Temple or Mother Temple. Um, I'm not doing too much video of driving in between because I, I'm trying to conserve the battery for places like this, but um, the ride here was really nice, mountainous, really green. We saw uh, like cattle farms and uh, this temple uh, Suda, you said this temple... One has, of the most biggest complex temple in the island It's a Bali. complex. Uh -huh. So there's many, there's many different uh, sections. Yes, right. You're right. And yes. we're not visiting all the sections. We are going to see the biggest and the best one. The biggest and the best. Yeah. And you can too if you get a hold of Suda. Thank you. you. <laughs> On my surface. Yes. <laughs> so 180,000 rupiah for two people, 90 per person. And again, we're going to get a sarong here and uh, we'll enter the temple. This is the traditional uh, outfit worn by um, the locals when coming to the uh, temples for ceremonies. And of course, uh, behind me we have the uh, selection of tourist shops, as you see everywhere. Um, we're waiting now at the bottom parking area. It's, uh, again, we're going to take a shuttle uh, to the top. That's it for this temple guys. It was amazing. Um, definitely the biggest one I've seen. Uh, highly recommend coming here. It's actually not extremely busy or it's just the size. It's more spread out. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. One interesting thing, if you look behind me here, you'll see all these uh, statues and sometimes they look uh, very evil. And uh, so, and I was told this just uh, not long ago, so not uh, knowledge that I had before, but the reason that they look evil is because in, uh, in their culture, they believe in, you know, positivity and negativity um, attracting each other, uh, whereas like negative and negative will repel, just like uh, electrons. So they put these evil looking statues outside of temples and they will repel evil from entering and quite often you'll also see um, inside the front doors of a temple is like a separation wall 
and this is because evil spirits can't go around they can't zigzag and and go around these things they only go in straight lines so um, that's the reason for it so you'll see evil looking statues uh, at the front doors of all of the temples like in um, in a traditional house and then as you open the door you see this uh, separation wall and and that's the reasoning behind it so these are just small details of things that i wouldn't have known at all without um, getting a proper uh, guide so again highly recommend this guy um, but he is very booked some people book him for just like 20 day tours so uh, I think there's a bit of a waiting list but um, hopefully you can get in with him or somebody equally as good it's been very good very very happy um, with the service Anyways, we're done here at this temple. That was our last stop for the day. And I believe we are going to head down now. Um, as we walk down, there's all sorts of markets again on the side of the street that we took the shuttle up from. So it's kind of a, uh, a last minute chance uh, for somebody to try to get a little bit of money from tourists. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's nice too. We get to look around and... Suda! A big hug from Bali. Yes. I was just saying how much we enjoyed um, the tour, how much we enjoyed your thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, your knowledge with everything. Please, and, yeah. I'm an ordinary person, Nick. Please, please. <laughs> He's very humble, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so. Anyway, starting the descent now. <laughs> Even the walk down isn't too bad. Lots to see. And actually, usually, um, not today because of the clouds, but usually you can actually see Mount Batur behind this temple. Uh, we looked at some of the postcards um, in one of the shops on the way down. Unfortunately, we missed it today, but uh, it would have been really nice to see that as well. So hopefully when you visit, you get that view. But the view on the other side is really nice. You can see like all the way down into Bali. The clouds have come down, so you can't see uh, can't see the temple. So I think we're actually going to a rice field. Are we going to a rice field, Kate? We're going to a rice field on the way home, so that's good. So that will be why we have a rule from the government. So guys, we stopped in an area called Mahagira, which is uh, like a really pic picturesque rice field. Um, so I'm happy about that because I wanted to see one without uh, a ton of tourists around. So it uh, looks really nice right now, but the clouds are pretty low. I'm just going to show you a picture that they have here of what it can look like when you can see the volcano in the background. So if I, if I lived in Bali, I would definitely be coming here uh, with a tripod until I can get a scene like that. But oh man, like just walking up to this, it just looks amazing. Holy cow. Wow. So beautiful. Oh my god. So beautiful. Oh. See? See? It's, like wow. it's like a painting. Like a painting. Wow. See how it's the water is with the white color of the water, yeah. And of course this, is this place is so picturesque, so beautiful. And they actually have, it looks like, uh, villas here. So you can rent a place here if you want. Although you're far from other things. Uh, but if you're looking for something peaceful and serene, maybe this is the spot for you. Anyways, just beautiful rice fields. I just took a whole bunch of photos here with my uh, big camera. So hopefully they, uh, some of them turn out well and uh, you might see them on Instagram. Love it. Anyways, we... Uh, we just ordered some food here. It's already almost five o'clock, so um, we haven't had lunch or anything, so it's dinner time. I'm trying some uh, local fish. It is farmed fish, which I'm not a fan of, um, but it's from the, the lake at the bottom of the volcano. So uh, I figured, why not? Let's give it a shot and uh, let's see how it is. So the village uh, step. Good morning guys, last day here in Ubud, we think, anyways, last day at this hotel, we haven't uh, booked our next 
move yet, so nothing's really planned. Um, we have to check out in a few hours though. Uh, so we're just going for breakfast here. My stomach is not doing so good, I think, from that fish yesterday. Last night on the way home, just started to feel a little bit nauseous. And then uh, this morning, I just emptied myself and now things are just like turning in there, so... We'll see how breakfast goes. Probably the first case for me of the infamous Bally Belly. But uh, hopefully, hopefully things start looking up. I'm just walking down the main street right now and just every once in a while it's like something's not good. But uh, we'll see what happens here. And if there's an emergency, hopefully the bathroom is okay at this place. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna eat, head back to the hotel, finish packing, and try and figure out what's next. I think we're gonna be going to Seminyak maybe. Uh, head back towards the beach area. So, keep you posted. Uh, we just had breakfast, finished packing, and uh, we're actually now just trying to figure out what the next step is because we have to check out here again pretty quick. Um, we're thinking about going to Seminyak next. Ubud's really nice. It, there's just a ton of different like tourist shops, uh, which are really interesting to go poke your head in and out of. A lot of different restaurants and cafes. Uh, you can find a you know good inexpensive healthy food options on every little corner is just like something interesting you know like whether it's a temple or a shop or a little fruit stand uh, it's just something always you know pulling your eyes one way or another and um, I think that you could really explore here for quite a long time without getting bored uh, what else can I say about Ubud. Definitely I feel like there's more bugs here, more insects, so bring your uh, repellent and be prepared for that. But nothing bad, I feel like you're really in the middle of nature here. Uh, I do miss the sea. I prefer to be on the water than I do in the mountains, but I do appreciate both. So a lot of stuff to see here, a lot of temples, a lot of day tours you can do, a lot of picturesque areas. Really good feeling. Um, we actually thought about just staying here and not going to like Chenggu and Seminyak and stuff like that um, because those areas I think are just kind of westernized like they're more you know you see shops like H&M and Polo Ralph Lauren and I don't want to see any of that stuff when I'm on a holiday uh, but nonetheless we're going to go check out Seminyak and, and uh, at least for probably two or three nights see how it feels. If we hate it, then we'll probably move back towards the Uluwatu area where it's, there's a little more nature. Okay, we'll see how it goes. So if you want to tag along, that'll be in another video. If you guys have any questions about stuff that I saw or did here, it's impossible to show you guys everything. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'll answer as best as I can. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.